I came down here because I wanted to be uh, with the best. Um, the resources here are outstanding. The it starts with the alignment, excellence, um, the standard of uh, expectation. This is, listen, you're 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 looked at in terms of championships here, and I want that. I want to be under the bright lights. I want to be on the Broadway stage. That's that's what my passion is. And so, yeah, that's part of the draw. There's no doubt about that. Um, oh, welcome in to the latest episode of that SEC podcast. I'm your host, Michael Braddon. I go by SEC Mike on Twitter. And made we got a great show lined up today. Just got off the line with Preston Guy covers the LSU Tigers for TigerBait.com. Really, really outstanding stuff from Preston. First time I've ever had an opportunity to speak with Preston, and he really delivered the goods, talking about all this momentum Brian Kelly's LSU program's got right now, heading into National Signing Day. They're killing it in the transfer portal. The staff he's put together, and even the speculation surrounding Caleb Williams, the quarterback, everybody in the <laughs> what's out of the transfer portal, you know, he'll give us uh, his insight into what's going on there. So stay tuned for that. Really, really appreciate all the time Preston gave us there. But before we get to the interview, have one show topic for the show today. I saw these, had to discuss it, and we've got us some preseason Heisman odds. And this is not from some online casino that you can't really bet at. You're down at the Virgin Island, and they got to give you Bitcoin wire transfer. This from Caesars <laughs> out in Las Vegas, one of the uh, most established sports books in the country. Caesars Sportsbook has put out Heisman Trophy odds. So these are legitimate, and they've got about 100 players on the list, and they've got about 20, 25 SEC players on the list. So instead of just running down the list, going – player by player, giving you the odds, which is pretty damn boring. I'm going to break this down a little bit differently. We're going to start with the best value bets on the board here, according to Caesars for preseason Heisman Trophy odds. And again, so this is not me saying these are the guys that I think are necessarily going to win, uh, have the best chance at winning the Heisman Trophy. These are the guys that have very low odds currently, but Here's your opportunity to score big, and if you don't think it can happen, go do some research. Find Joe Burrow's preseason odds to win the Heisman Trophy. When he did it, he wasn't even listed. And the first time he was listed, which I believe was after the, the season opener when they beat the hell out of Utah State or something, he was 500-1. to one. So imagine if you put 1000 bucks on Joe Burrow at 500-1 to one to win the Heisman Trophy. That's what I'm trying to get you right now an opportunity to potentially cash in on some small ticket guys that could hit big. And I'm starting right where a guy we've already talked about on this show being a potential Heisman candidate, KJ Jefferson, 150 to one to win the next Heisman trophy. He's one of the lowest odds on this entire list, but I think he's got a great chance. If he continues his progression, he's going to be the starting quarterback for the second year. He's been in Kendall Brown's system for three years now, so he should have that system down like the back of his hand. I know he's losing Traylon Burks, generational talent at the receiver position, but they picked up Jadon Hazelwood, so you know potentially a capable number one to slide into that offense. And more importantly, they got a trio of running backs they can trust. They've got an offensive line that is getting better each and every season under Sam Pittman. You know, it's not like K.J. Jefferson is going to come out here and throw for 40 touchdowns, 4,000 passing yards, but I don't think he quite has to be that. If he were to carry Arkansas on his back, get him to the SEC championship game, maybe a college football playoff, you know, I think he's got to be more Vince Young than anything else, a guy that maybe throws for 25 touchdowns and rushes for another 20. I don't think that's totally out of the realm of possibility. So KJ Jefferson, 150 to one to win the Heisman Trophy. That's the best value bet on the board. Now, how about this? This is a guy we've not really even discussed much on the show, but former Georgia Tech running back, now he's an Alabama running back, Jameer Gibbs, 100 to one to win the Heisman Trophy. And I know everybody's gonna say, well, Bryce Young, Bryce Young just won the Heisman. He's coming back to do it again. 
to get Alabama to that national championship. He may very well. He's got Bryce Young. He's got the best odds on this list. We'll get to him in a moment. But it just seems like these Heisman voters never want to give it to the preseason favorite. They're just waiting for those guys to stumble. And if I'm not mistaken, it seems like damn near every other Alabama running back is in it for winning the Heisman Trophy. So Jameer Gibbs ranked third in the country in all-purpose yards last season. Now he's going to be surrounded by talent in Tuscaloosa. Brian Robinson, of course, off to the NFL. There is a hole there in that offense. I think Jameer Gibbs is a natural to just play in that offense. If he has a huge season, he's going to be a Heisman candidate, no doubt. Now this one, this is someone that we talked about with Preston Guy in our interview upcoming here, but I've always loved watching him play, and the, the trouble with him is staying healthy. Miles Brennan. Quarterback, LSU, 100-1 to to win the next Heisman Trophy, and that's going to be key. Can he win that job? Can he stay healthy? Play it for Brian Kelly. He's going to have Kayshawn Boutte to throw the ball to. I love his talent. The biggest question mark is just can he stay on the field, and what a story that would be if he managed to do it next season in Baton Rouge. I think uh, right now as things stand, he'd be my favorite to start at quarterback for LSU. And Brian Kelly's got a strong track record of getting these quarterbacks up to speed right away. I think Miles Brennan is worth taking a little bit of a flyer on at 100 to 1 to win the next Heisman Trophy. Now, how about this guy? His stock has cooled significantly, but not here. <laughs> Just because they had a dud to end the season in the Egg Bowl, the bowl game wasn't much better. But until that point, they were lighting the scoreboards up. I think this guy's got real potential to break the SEC record for most passing yards in a season, and it's Will Rogers, Mississippi State quarterback. If they can protect him at 75-1, to 1, come on, you can't beat that. If uh, Who knows, Mike Leach and company pull a couple upsets, continue that progression of that offense, which was you know firing at all cylinders in early November last season. They, they can carry that over to next season. Will Rogers is going to be in the discussion because he's going to be shattering Mississippi State and SEC records week in, week out, 75-1. to 1. I love those odds for Will Rogers. Now, how about this one? This one's for you, Cousin Shane. Hendon Hooker, 60-1 to 1 to win the next Heisman Trophy. Just look at the progress he made in year one in Josh Heupel's system. Now they got his number one target, Cedric Tillman's returning. They've got a couple running backs returning. They got four or five offensive linemen returning. You think the offense was fast before? It's going to get even faster next season on Rocky Top, and it's going to be led by Hendon Hooker, the true dual-threat quarterback that is only going to progress more and more in this system. If Tennessee does big things next season, it's going to be because of Hendon Hooker and his arm and his legs making plays all over the field. And at 60-1, to one, Again, I'm not saying he's going to win the award, but I love that value for Hendon Hooker. Now, next little category here, I'm, I'm calling these most interesting because I don't know what to make of these, and I'm, I'm wondering, you know, who puts these together. But, you know, I've not watched enough film on this guy. We know that we all know the name. I'm planning to do a deep dive here. I've just been a little lazy. Apologies, but I'm going to go back and watch all his games because the hype, is going out of control in Columbia. Spencer Rattler, 20 to 1. He is currently the third best odds in the SEC to win the Heisman Trophy. South Carolina's quarterback, of course, transferring in from Oklahoma. Can he do it in Marcus Satterfield's offense? I don't know, but there's a lot of faith that he can out in Las Vegas. Spencer Rattler, 20 to 1. Again, third best odds in the SEC to win the next Heisman Trophy. That's incredible. How about this one? Max Johnson, former LSU quarterback, now at Texas A&M, 40 to 1. Kind of scratched my head at that one. New system, new team. But hell, if he wins a starting job in Texas A&M, does some big things on the field, he's going to be hard to deny. It's going to be a loaded quarterback competition in College Station, but 40 to 1 seems a bit high to Max Johnson. I know he's got the talent, but just based on what we've seen thus far, that's a little rich for my blood. Luke Altmaier, Ole Miss quarterback, 60-1. to 1. You know, it's not really fair to judge him off what we saw last season, I don't think. True freshman thrown into action after Matt Corral went down in the Sugar Bowl. Uh, he also 
saw some action, I believe, against Auburn, I believe it was. But uh, Luke Altmaier, 60-1. to I think, if nothing else, that just shows you how much confidence Vegas has in Lane Kiffin to develop these quarterbacks. And they anticipate, hey, potential breakout season from Luke Altmaier. Another one kind of I'm scratching my head at, Zach Calzada, former Texas A&M quarterback, now at Auburn, 60-1. to I don't see T.J. Finley on here, so... Hey, this is kind of assuming that Zach Calzada is going to win that starting job. We've got a long way to go before we get there, but we all know the talent Calzada has. It's all about consistency for the new Auburn quarterback. Can he get that out of him until we see it? 60-1, to 1, again, too rich for my blood. And here's one. It's interesting for a number of reasons. There's some value here. I'm not disagreeing with this necessarily, but uh, new Ole Miss running back Zach Evans, 150 to one to win the next Heisman Trophy. And, you know, people seem to not realize what an outstanding rushing attack the Rebels have had under Lane Kiffin. So look for that to continue. And Zach Evans is going to get the ball a million times next season in this offense. So he could put up huge, huge numbers. That one's very intriguing. You know, we'll have to see what he looks like in the SEC. But Hey, maybe take a flyer on Zach Evans at 150 to 1 to be the next Heisman Trophy winner. Now, I also thought this was kind of interesting, but I just roped it in together because they're all on the same team. And this gives you an indication of the unknowns of the Billy Napier era. I know the Gators are fired up as hell for the staff he's building, the recruiting he's doing, all the buzz they're getting. I'm not trying to tamper that, but we got three quarterbacks on this list. So that just tells me. Nobody has a damn clue at this point, and how could they, of who's going to start for the Florida Gators. But it's interesting that uh, particularly Jack Miller, the transfer from Ohio State, is on this list, 50-1 to to win the next Heisman Trophy for Jack Miller. Same odds as Anthony Richardson, who you got to assume is probably going to be the starting quarterback, but he's going to have to earn it. Nothing's going to be given to him under Billy Napier. And, hell, it could still be Emory Jones, 100-1. to to win the Heisman Trophy. So I just thought it was interesting. Maybe some added faith here in Billy Napier out there in Las Vegas that we got three Florida quarterbacks on this list. High preseason Heisman odds. Now some of the other ones I didn't go over. Bryce Young, I said he's got the best odds at five to two. So you actually, it's basically impossible to make money bet on Bryce Young to win the next Heisman Trophy. So that's a stay away from a value point. But You know, as expected, he's going to be the Heisman favorite. He just won the Heisman Trophy. He's an outstanding player. Alabama's going to begin the season at number one. But maybe he's not even the best player on his team because Will Anderson, 30-1, to the outstanding linebacker, he's got the third best odds in the SEC to win the Heisman Trophy. I thought that was interesting. Will Levis, the Kentucky quarterback, is at 75-1. to Ajay Hall, the Alabama sophomore receiver, 100-1. to Kayshawn Butte, 100-1. to Tank Bigsby, maybe that's one you take a flyer on, also at 100 to 1. And finally, Trey Sanders, Alabama running back, also at 100 to 1. Now, here we get really, these are some wild ones right here. Arik Gilbert, I don't even know he's on the team down there at Georgia, but he's got 151, 150 to 1 odds to win the Heisman Trophy. We got Jadon Hazelwood, Arkansas's new receiver, 150 to 1. And last but not least, Jordan Birch, South Carolina defensive lineman, 150 to 1 to win the Heisman Trophy. So I think they're just taking flyers on anybody with massive potential down there at that bottom of the list. So it's pretty interesting, but we got, uh, you know, several, nearly everybody in the SEC has at least one Heisman contender, according to the Caesar Sportsbook preseason Heisman odds. All right, so hey, that's enough of me going on and on about Heisman odds. <laughs> if Shane were on the pod, his head would be ringing with all these numbers talk. So let's get away from that, kick it over to our interview with Preston Guy from TigerBait.com. All right, we're pleased to be joined by Preston Guy, who does an outstanding job covering the LSU Tigers for TigerBait.com. Give him a follow on the Twitter machine, as Coach O would say, at PGuy underscore 77. Preston, thank you so much for joining me. I really appreciate it. 
Thank you for letting me be here, Mike, man. I'm excited to be here. Quality Coach O reference there right off the bat. <laughs> hey, I do my homework, believe it or not. So I know I look like uh, like a joke, but uh, no, I, I actually research this stuff. And I know you guys do an outstanding job over there at TigerBait.com. So I wanted to reach out. We got National Signing Day coming up here in uh, just a little over a week. And Brian Kelly's just got so much momentum there. He's only been there a little while. And I just wanted to start with that before we get to any recruiting questions. Are, are you surprised that uh, Brian Kelly has just taken this thing and ran with it with just so much momentum with, uh, like I said, a month, month and a half on the job? Um, well, it got off to a much slower start than a lot of us actually were expecting. I mean, and LSU, of course, lost a lot of commitments with Ogeron, you know, um, uh, getting forced out and then, uh, new coach come in. That's always going to be slow. But honestly, Brian Kelly got hired at a point at a time in which he did, you know, leaving a potential playoff bid because of that early signing day deadline. And it was a little underwhelming, but excusably underwhelming. Um, it, it's a, it's a tough call to come in because there's so much relationships involved in this recruiting process mm -hmm. uh, to get a kid to meet a coach who quite frankly at Notre Dame, you're not recruiting very many of the same athletes. I mean, you might have a handful every here and there. Uh, in fact, Notre Dame did have a kid committed from Ponchatoula, Louisiana. But, uh, of course, Brian Kelly respected that boundary and didn't even pursue him. He is pursuing his teammate, though, uh, oddly enough, Jacoby, uh, Jacoby Matthews, five-star safety out there who will be on campus Friday. Um, but uh, it, it got off to a really slow start where a lot of people were kind of scratching their heads and – in fact, it was about a, a week, week and a half before we even saw any recruits posting pictures with Brian Kelly doing it. And that's one of the big differences between Brian Kelly and Coach O. Brian Kelly is a great football coach who goes and does recruiting to seal the deal. And from that point moving forward, we saw some pictures when, you know, Quincy Wiggins and got a few guys. But basically it was like Quincy Wiggins was the headliner for uh, signing day. And, and mm -hmm. don't get me wrong, that's a freak of nature. Top 100 player from Baton Rouge. You kind of expected him to come on board. It'd be bad if you missed on him. Um, right. But he's 6'6", 270, every bit of it. You got him. And it was kind of slow. And we knew they were going to hit that transfer portal hard. I mean, they, um, Coach Polian, uh, um, you know, of course, that's uh, uh, Bill Polian's son, Brian Polian, coming from Notre Dame to LSU as a recruiting role, but also special teams coordinator, was literally producing graphics talking about transfers from LSU <laughs> who have gone, you know, like Joe Burrows of the world, the center, Liam Shanahan, Braden Fahoko, who will be on my show later tonight, by the way. Um, Ooh, nice plug. A <laughs> little subtle plug there. But anyways, <laughs> he was on the graphic. But just talking about how these transfers have had success at LSU, which is not something we've seen LSU go publicly target transfers. It's been more of a fill this hole. It's, it's, it's a need. Go after it. So it picked up very quickly. I, I'm talking incredibly quickly. My, my show two weeks ago today, uh, pick, they, they, uh, three, uh, guys announced to LSU right before my show. And I'm just scrambling to get these guys. So Joe <laughs> Fouché was a uh, safety from Arkansas. And one day mm -hmm. we saw LSU Dwight McLaughlin, in the corner announced his transfer from LSU, which of course, a couple of days later, he ended up transferring to Arkansas, but then right. two Arkansas DBs within a 24 hour period, both announced they're coming to LSU. It happened so quickly, but Joe Fouché announced his commitment to LSU. <laughs> I DM'd him, said, hey, you want to come on the show? He said, absolutely. So 30 minutes after his commitment, I didn't even, I was like, I couldn't confirm how to pronounce his name. I said, Fauci. <laughs> <laughs> That's how quick all this stuff moves. And he was, he was such a nice guy. He did it from a Pelicans basketball game. That's how excited he was to be a part of this LSU class. So yeah, it's been moving very fast and that's what needed to happen. And, and Brian Kelly, he came in, took his time, did some evaluation, some let's wait and see evaluation and then got to it. And there's eight spots left in this class. Of course, signing day is in what's that seven and a half days from now. Um, mm -hmm. And we'll see how many spots I'm kind of expecting three or four spots left of the, of course, this year you get 32 between the transfers and your signing class, but you only signed 13 freshmen this year. Now it's a great nucleus. It's a great 13 freshmen, mm -hmm. uh, you know, uh, with some really key pivotal pieces. 
And I have a feeling the ones they might add are going to be pretty pivotal too, if, if they do indeed get them. Yeah. And, you know, like you mentioned there, your interview with Joe Fouché, you can find that on the tigerbait.com YouTube page. That's right. Check that out uh, uh, earlier today. Really good interview. Joe Fouché talking about coming home and his family's mm-hmm. going to be able to cover him. So I know Razorbacks don't want to hear that, but Hey, they, they got one of their own. It was like a little trade there, but uh, it was I, like I, a trade. I highly recommend LSU fans go check that out. But let me ask you about uh, the coaching staff there because you mm-hmm. you kind of referenced it. It was a little slow at the start for Brian Kelly. You know, there was speculation. He was trying to bring people over from Notre Dame. And, of, of course, his defense coordinator got the head coaching job, so he's not going to come. But you turn around and you get Matt House from the Kansas City Chiefs. He did a tremendous job for the Kentucky Wildcats under Mark Stoops. And then you get Mike Dembrock, who I had someone on my show the other day uh, Adam McClintock, who grades all these coordinators, he gave Denbrock the number one offensive coordinator grade in the entire country last mm-hmm. season. So let me just ask you, which hire were you more impressed with, uh, the offensive coordinator Denbrock or the defensive coordinator House? Well, let me tell you this, what I'm mostly impressed with, because on their surface, neither one of them have like what I call like a Dave Aranda type energy to them where you're like, dude, this is a grand slam. LSU is going to win the national title because of this guy. You know, Dave Aranda, when LSU hired him, you sat there and said, that's a grand slam. There were some names sources were dropping to me that excited me more than both, just legitimately. Mm -hmm. Let me tell you what was exciting. When talking about the X's and O's and how their styles blend together, you know, that that slow, methodical, pro-style offense of Denbrock incorporating tight ends, hogging time of possession, and then talking to some insider guys about Matt House's defenses that have typically wanted a slower pace offense to complement it based on its uh, little slightly more aggressive and multiple look style, you know, and talking to guys who know how football works, how those pair with each other, that excited me. It kind of told me that LSU has a head football coach who is is, is about that omni pitcher of the team, the big meta look of your football team, not just getting for the one flashy hire or the one flashy recruit that makes a lot of headlines. It's it's someone who who knows how to build a team, a cohesive unit as a team. Of the two, um, I think they're both pretty impressive. I would kind of put them like like that that B plus type type category, like expecting decent things. Mm-hmm. Oh man, oh man. Um, I would. They're very neck and neck to me. They're both good hires. There's a lot of things I can't ignore about Matt House, uh, such as he's a game away from the Super Bowl. By the way, very well respected. Tyron Matthew when when they announced the hire was raving about how good a coach he was on Twitter. Um, mm-hmm. And I'm not saying I read too much into that because every coach is going to go to bat for their guy, but that's a, that's a big name for LSU giving him a good endorsement, but I can't ignore how Kansas city has elevated its play defensively since he got there. And I, I have to be curious how much is he in those scheme meetings, by the way, since he's gotten hired at Kansas city, they've been to every super bowl. By the way, they're one game away from the Super Bowl right now. So he's about to go three for three on Super Bowls if he beats Joe Burrow and the Bengals this weekend. Uh, So some conflicted emotions for LSU fans there, of course. Um, You know, the amount of just super quality NFL players he's developed during his time as a coach. You know, Josh Allen from Kentucky. Uh, and and plenty of other just just absolute stu- Aaron Donald, uh, you know, just absolute superstars. I can't ignore that. So I, I get the feeling that there's something there with Matt House that's very impressive. Um, we've seen Den Brock with Notre Dame before, and the results were were adequate. They were okay. And of course, at Cincinnati, the the offense took care of business. He was there with Desmond Ritter as their quarterback, and it never was flashy, gaunty. Uh, uh, gaudy I'm sorry uh, in terms of like the offensive numbers but you did see consistently 450 yards per game type stuff uh, consistent and but more importantly you saw a lot of wins and 
in Cincinnati, uh, UCF. Uh, blah, man, I'm getting all mixed up here. All my all my undefeated Group of Five teams I've <laughs> yeah. got mixed up in my head. They're all the same. <laughs> yeah, exactly. You know what? What's a twelve and zero undefeated team? They're just going to lose to someone in the SEC eventually, anyways, right? So, <laughs> um, so uh, the, you know, it's not exactly a super easy place to win. Um, you know, it was kind of. I mean, although Brian Kelly did actually have some success at Cincinnati and. Um, it's not like you're going into a program that was just set up as an offensive juggernaut. So to have those good consistent numbers, you'll like it. But ultimately I think if he comes in and doesn't put up those gaudy offensive numbers at LSU, but they win like he won at Cincinnati, you'd have to be pretty excited about that. Right. So, mm-hmm. I mean, look, man, I'm, I'm going to, I'm going to pull the, the PC parent an- answer and say they're, they're pretty <laughs> equal to me. My love is equal. <laughs> well, you referenced all the success Brian Kelly and company are having in the transfer portal, bringing in so much talent. Uh, what do you attribute that to? Is it the relationships with, uh, you know, I'm hearing a lot of Frank Wilson behind the scenes working with mm-hmm. the, all his connections, or is it maybe just LSU just being one of the premier programs in the country and there's a need for these players? I mean, many of these guys are going to yeah. be plug in play or or maybe is it a mix of the two what do you think that uh is it that's made lsu so successful out of the transfer portal well as you probably as you're kind of even alluding to and asking the question there uh this is not going to be a one part question of course the program prestige is there i mean it's lsu i mean you look at guys like greg brooks and joe fouché they dreamed of playing for lsu and they didn't get that opportunity out of high school uh, they didn't get an offer from LSU and then they made a name for themselves at Arkansas and an offer was there to make a dream come true to come play for LSU and get immediate playtime in a position of need. Mm-hmm. That has been one thing is just kind of that program prestige prepared with opportunities. Uh, I've had some fans point out that, hey, maybe playing in that bowl game and getting slaughtered was kind of a good thing because they saw where that roster was at for LSU. These kids are watching it and saying, dude, that's that's LSU. And I have a legitimate chance to, to get on the field and play and, and make a difference. Um, so playtime, roster needs, I, I attribute a lot of that. And um, the staff he's hired is a lot of heavy hitters in recruiting. Um, Brian Polian, big recruiter. Joe Sloan has uh, a big recruiter as well. Uh, Cortez Hankton from Georgia they hired mm-hmm. is also known for recruiting. I mean, Frank Wilson is like, uh, you know, recruiting Jesus around here. He knows <laughs> just this area so well. Brad Davis is a guy who's not only he's from Baton Rouge uh, originally, uh, the offensive line coach. Of course, that was the interim coach for the bowl game uh, mm-hmm. from Baton Rouge uh, knows the area pretty well, but he's also been able to recruit the Midwest pretty well from his time at Arkansas, Missouri, that those kind of places. Uh, Jamar Kane is another one who is hitting the Twitter and the recruiting real hard. I mean, a lot of just very recruiting centric coaches on this staff. Um, the last thing I'm going to highlight there is I'm hearing Brian Kelly when he goes and meets a kid face to face is very impressive in terms of his organization his vision, his game plan. He's let's get down to business and talk where you fit into our program. He impresses the hell out of people from what I've heard. So I think he's done a pretty good job as a closer. And I almost wonder if the, he, he, he did make a visit just now to receiver an in-home visit. They just tweeted out a picture just a few minutes ago uh, from this three-star receiver out of Texas, who we'll have, we'll talk more about later, but um he doesn't do it all that often. Like the in-face, like he's not on the phone every single morning. Like Ogeron was, Mm -hmm. it's almost like scarcity is the commodity with his style. Like they want Brian Kelly to be the closer who goes in and really impresses the heck out of uh, a family and recruit. So those are kind of the things that have stood out to me as pretty good. Of course, LSU ranks number one in the transfer portal and is, is approaching a top 10 class overall, which is pretty impressive given you know, he, he inherited uh, about 13 commitments when he got here, about half a class. Mm-hmm. Well, speaking of uh, Brian Kelly and his ability to, to kind of get guys to buy in, you know, one guy he got to buy in that uh, is maybe not being talked about enough, Miles Brennan, the quarterback. That's so right. That kind of leads me to, 
you know, what's your confidence level that LSU is going to get strong quarterback play next year with Miles Brennan, Garrett Nussmeyer, Walker Howard, and then I, I got to ask you about this. You, you may not be tired of, of hearing it, but you Caleb Williams, about them, right? Yeah. Is that that rumors out <laughs> yeah. there? You would know a lot better than yeah. I. Is is there yeah. any legitimate legitimacy to that? And the only reason I feel like there kind of is at this point is everyone thinks he's going to Southern Cal. Why in the hell yeah. hadn't he done it yet? So I get I, I get know. where you're coming from too. By the way, I mean absolutely. Um, let me start with the the so let me first off they are looking to add a quarterback in the transfer portal. Miles Brennan is a guy which great job getting him to come back. That's a kid who wants to be on campus, who wants to be LSU's quarterback. However, he's been injured every single year, and as we mm-hmm. see in football, time in time out. Remember the you know Bob Sanders for the Colts. Very good NFL defensive MVP one year, and then five straight years just never could not be injured. Some guys are just injury prone. So it's hard to really count him as someone you can rely upon. I would argue that you need to just get like 10 ish good games out of him because you really don't want to play Nussmeyer and you really don't want to play Walker Howard next year because I think he needs a year to gain weight. And he's coming off an injury to his fibula, like a, like a little micro fracture, but it was a complete clean break in his fibula, which is not, you really don't want a tibia break in your leg. That's the one where it starts to impact how you run. The fibula is more of a supportive bone. So he's, he's going to be all right, but I want that to fully heal. And I want him to have some muscle mass built and have some time, but he's, he's definitely your most talented quarterback uh, on the roster and he's probably just sheer talent wise one of the most talented players in the country uh, mm-hmm. of course he was a five-star quarterback and some people have him as the number one quarterback in the country so I would really like to put some bubble wrap around him and give you some space and and if you're not really counting Miles Brennan as a guy you can rely on for for you know reliable depth yeah you kind of do need to add another name in uh, so I'll start with with the Caleb Williams, um, and I get where you're coming from. It does seem like USC is just the very obvious choice. I'm going to throw in some speculation with no basis, just kind of where my brain would go, just if I'm guessing what's going on with there, and that NIL stuff probably would play, like negotiating type stuff or whatever might could possibly play a factor, and, you know, maybe LSU is the – you know, the, the flag of, Oh, look, they're interested and I could do this. You need, you know, so I'm just guessing that that might be something there. Um, You know, uh, I do know he likes LSU and I covered him in his original recruiting process. uh, It's only a year ago. Uh, (laughs) He's very nice kid. I like him a lot. Um, And he came to LSU's camp and, was impressive and he liked LSU, but he wanted to take his time to make his decision. That's one thing about him. He's not afraid to take some time. Um, so LSU Ogeron wanted, a, he wanted his quarterback locked up before the season and Nussmeyer was ready to go. And on, they evaluated Nussmeyer and Caleb Williams when they came to camp and they were neck and neck on their board. They had Nussmeyer's their co number one quarterback in the country next alongside Caleb Williams so they just wanted the first one to come on board and while you know uh, it's pretty hard to lock down two quality quarterbacks in one recruiting class um so that that's kind of what happened there I think at this point should Caleb Williams be interested in LSU it'd be kind of one of those obvious okay well (laughs) that changes things dramatically so I I I could believe LSU's the runner-up I don't see a realistic scenario where, where he actually ends up at LSU, but never say never on these mm-hmm. kind of things. That's just <laughs> how it works. But there hasn't been a, a, a ton of substantial contact, and yeah. I don't think there's a visit or anything planned like that. It, it would be kind of one of those out-of-nowhere things. But, uh, you know, Arik Gilbert was kind of like that, and uh, yeah. he announced he came to LSU. Of course, it didn't really work out, but he did announce he – uh, he did commit to LSU and play half a season for LSU. So the, things happen. Now it doesn't matter if LSU has got the next Joe Burrow on the roster, if they can't protect him and that offensive mm-hmm. line, that's going to be something critical this off season. Mm-hmm. How much work do you, is Brad Davis and company going to have to do? I know they've added a couple transfers. Uh, yep. You know, wh- how much work needs to be put into to field a capable unit there? 
Yeah, and you're losing three or four guys who were, you know, starters this year. Defining starters kind of <laughs> a little tough based on how many guys were hurt and rotating out. Um, so it's going to be a, a big rebuild. Now, when the season ended, I looked at that and I said, look, this is a multi-year rebuild. There's no way you can sugarcoat it and say this is going to be an elite offensive line next year. Uh, they they br- bringing in uh, four uh, commitments um in the 2022 class uh and that's always incredibly helpful um two of them are very quality like ready to play type guys right you got um uh, um uh emory emory jones out of catholic high here in baton rouge and you've got will campbell the offensive mm-hmm. tackle from neville louisiana up north and Will Campbell's, of course, five-star offense tackle. He'd be a guy who'd be ready-ish to play. I mean, you never really want a freshman to play, but if you had to stick him in there, at least he, they're going to look respectable. Uh, but then they recruited that transfer portal, and things have changed quite a bit because they're bringing in a Florida international freshman All-American tackle, Miles Frazier, who I'm kind of expecting to be your left tackle day one. Uh, I mean – there's Cam Wire who did announce his return, who will put his name in the hat there, but we'll see. And then recently they've added Tremont Shorts, um, you know, the FCS transfer who's impressed dramatically. Uh, I think East Tennessee is where he's from. Uh, he's yep. impressed people as a, a good quality player. He'll be an interior offensive lineman for LSU. So, I mean, that's six linemen. That's a ton of linemen. And not like, not like figuratively, I, I, I tallied up their, their total weights and it's actually like 1,875 pounds. It's like literally a ton of offensive linemen they're bringing in. And quite frankly, LSU's trench problems started with the lack of quantity of linemen. I mean, there were years, I mean, the, the three years leading up to this season, they averaged signing three offensive linemen a year, which is just not enough bodies, especially if you're not hitting on every mm-hmm. single one of those guys. And obviously they missed on quite a few of them. Um, so I personally believe that your recruiting class, your, the composition of your recruiting class, you should be able to field a football team with it. You need a right. quarterback every year. You need a couple running backs. I mean, four or five receivers. You should have five or six offensive linemen, or at least four, <laughs> you know, and they just hadn't been doing that. And that's been a problem because of, you know, attrition's really high and, uh, you know, you might miss on a guy or two or an injury or two. And it, it was, it was a really bad problem. So there's optimism for this offensive line. I, I, I think to say that it'll be elite or top notch in the SEC next year, it might be setting the bar a little too high, but I, I definitely could see them being, uh, you know, uh, an average offensive line that's not a a major problem for this team. I, I could definitely see that. And then the year afterward, that's where it, it could be setting up to be a pretty darn good offensive line as these guys develop. All right, last thing for you, Preston. I really appreciate all your time. We already referenced it, National Signing Day just around the corner. Mm-hmm. We got the five-star Matthews in discussion. Uh, the, the nation's number one linebacker, Harold Perkins, just decommit yeah. from A&M. Yeah. Is this going to be a good national signing day for uh, the LSU Tigers yeah. and Brian Kelly? Yeah, uh, well, I feel pretty good about Jacoby Matthews. Um, and quite frankly, if you had one of those guys, it's pretty good. So I'm feeling pretty good about Jacoby Matthews. Harold Perkins is having one of those b- bizarre recruiting cycles we've seen from time to time. Uh, a lot of my AM sources are comparing it to Zach Evans, who, mm-hmm. if you followed that recruiting <laughs> cycle a couple of years ago, it was an absolute nightmare. And, you know, shocker, he's leaving TCU now and going to the transfer portal and never really announced anywhere. It's been kind of crazy for him. Um, but that being said, he's going to be on campus Friday. And Jacoby Matthews is going to be there too. And we saw uh, one of the assistant coaches for LSU. We saw uh, Jamar Kane uh, tweet out a picture of Devin White and Uh-oh. Tyron Matthew today. <laughs> so little little a safety and a linebacker. Very interesting. <laughs> so, you know, I think there's a lot of buzz around that. And you certainly feel much better about Harold Perkins now than you did while he was committed to A&M because a and has just been a monster on the recruiting trail. a and in on both those guys. I can tell you um, Jimbo Fisher is in the state right now recruiting Jacoby Matthews. 
So he's not going to let go. They've been doing some monster work on the recruiting trail. Uh, you know, these Texas eight and four jokes that ain't going to hold up with this recruiting class. Like I right. get it. Like, you know, everybody's a Cle- everybody Clemson's until Clemson stops Clemsoning and then right. <laughs> it's respected. So <laughs> with this recruiting cast, watch out for Texas A&M, but they're in on both those guys going to push really hard. Um, I, I like LSU's. Uh, I think LSU's got as good a chance for Harold Perkins as anybody. So don't, don't write LSU off on him, but it's a wacky cycle. And I'm, I'm hearing things like he may even consider Jackson state. <laughs> go, oh yeah. Go Dion, Coach course, prime yeah. over there. That's the kind of wacky stuff you're hearing out of this recruiting uh, <laughs> cycle with him. So th- those are going to be your two big names. You're absolutely watching, but th- those are going to be guys who aren't depth guys. They're stars for your program that you're going to build around. And I've heard Harold Perkins on the field. Um, from guys I've talked to, um, uh, he might be the best player in the country. Uh, that uh, That's how much of a beast he is out there in Texas. So uh, you clearly want him, almost worth the drama, but I could tell you this, uh, Brian Kelly's a no-nonsense guy once you're on <laughs> campus. It's not going to fly. And, I, 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 you know, that to me makes me feel more confident signing guys like that, that there's going to be a, you know, a, a man in the house who will provide structure. Uh, mm-hmm. A real structure providing coach. I think that's good for guys who maybe um, have a more, uh, you know, I don't want to say like a, like character problems. It's not character problems, just a more flamboyant type personality. Maybe they might do better with a coach who provides uh, structure. So stay tuned. Eight spots remaining for LSU's class. A uh, few guys coming on campus. I'm sure they're going to try to make an impression. Uh, I would expect three or four spots open after signing day, and they're going to leave them open for transfers because after spring ball, you know, after position right. battles play out, you know, there, there might be a Joe Burrow or two on the market. <laughs> Who knows? Yeah, absolutely. Well, Preston, I really appreciate your time. He's Preston guy. Give him a follow P guy underscore 77. You can find that in the show notes and check out all the great work they're doing over at tigerbait.com. And don't forget to check out the YouTube channel as well. Also, of course, called tiger bait. Preston, thank you so much for your time. Thank you, Mike. Appreciate you having me. All right. So just want to say thanks again to Preston for joining the show. I thought, uh, you know, that was really, really outstanding insight on what's been going on down there in Baton Rouge and what could be coming next week with National Signing Day. It's a very exciting time down there. If you're an LSU Tiger fan, we've got two more interviews to wrap up the week scheduled to take place. So look forward to that. I'm going to keep this thing rolling as long as we possibly can. I'm a little bit under the weather, but I'm muscling through to get this content out. So I hope each and every one of you appreciate it before Shane and I head on down to Orlando. We're planning to do a pod from Orlando. So, man, who knows? Shane's already promised he's going to be hammered drunk for that one. So let's see how that goes. Uh, But until then, (laughs) I hope to see you on the next one. I appreciate each and every one of you hanging out. Catch you on the next one.